How do you feel about full titanium frag pattern handle scales for your knife? Personally, I love them. I can't get enough of them. I love the texture. I love the feel. And it always looks and feels premium. But you don't always have to pay a premium price tag to experience this. Today, we've got another knife from our friends over at Kubi, and it is under the $200 price tag. You're definitely going to want to check this one out. Let's talk about the Kubi Interflow. Hey, how's it going, everybody? If you're new here, welcome in. And if you've been here before, welcome back. I'm Walsh Shambo, the connoisseur and collector of all things sharp and shiny. And today I truly am excited to finally get the opportunity to talk about the new Kubi Interflow and a little bit of backstory for you guys. For me, I couldn't wait to get my hands on this knife when Kubi teased it on their Instagram. And then I was super excited when they uh, reached out and said, hey, would you like to check one out? Well, as it turns out, I did. And there happened to be some inventory issues because these knives started flying off the shelf so quickly that they could not get one in my hands fast enough. And so it's actually been a couple months and finally they had the opportunity to send me this. And here we are talking about it and I could have talked about the Interflow at the same time that I talked about this guy, the Kubi Blackout, which is another knife uh, that I received at the same time. But because both of these knives were so great and so excellent, I felt like they definitely deserved their own space. The reason why I'm excited about this knife is actually a couple different reasons. The first is that this is the second James Lowe design on a knife that's been released so far. The first one was another knife that I desperately wanted to get my hands on, but was never in stock and I just never was able to get it. Now you might be wondering, that sounds all good and well, but what's it made out of and what does it cost? Starting off, we're looking at an overall length coming in at just over eight inches long with a three and a half inch blade. This blade is made of Bowler M390 that's been heat treated to 60 to 61 HRC. I don't believe that this is the same cryo treat process that they did on the blackout because they targeted the blackout at 60 to 62. It's going to be very similar. I'm a-okay with 60 to 61 Rockwell on M390. I think that that's going to perform just fine. We're looking at a compound grind with a hollow on the main and then a flat near the tip. So you could technically call this a Tonto. Is it an American Tonto? Is it a Japanese Tonto? I'm not entirely sure. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section down below, but either way, it looks gorgeous. It also features this very nice deep swedge at the top of the blade stock, which allows for some extra cutting relief. The handle scales are these gorgeous, black titanium frag milled pattern handle scales. We have brass accents for both the pivot and the body screws and those body screws are in fact T8 as well. We also have a black titanium backspacer that features a hidden lanyard post which is great because we don't have any unnecessary holes going through the handle scales and the people that like lanyards can still have one. It also has a 3D milled titanium pocket clip which is not overstated at all. If anything it's understated. It's a very simple design but it's functional and it works very well in the hands. Despite the excessive amount of frag pattern milling on these handle scales, it is very comfortable in the hands and that pocket clip being a 3D milled variety is going to disappear entirely. On the spine of the blade, we have some nice jimping at this ramp point. It's as far out as it could possibly go without hitting that swedge and it works rather well. Deployment options are very simple. We have a double-sided thumb stud, so thumb flicking is going to be great. And then, of course, reverse flicking is also great. And that is something that can be difficult on a frame lock knife because many frame lock knives have this issue where it's entirely too easy to put pressure on that lock bar just by holding it or by trying to deploy it. The way that this one is situated, that is actually a non-issue. I have no issue 
deploying it. It doesn't feel like the detent's too stiff, and I don't find myself putting too much pressure on that lock bar, which is great. Now, if you don't like the black and gold theme, they do have two other color options right now. They've got the gray with blue accents, and then they've got the blue with blue accents, all three of which come in with a dual directional satin brush, brush finish on the blade. And so needless to say, they all look pretty dang good. Now, if you're wondering how this compares to other knives that you might have in your inventory, here it is up against a Spyderco Para 3. As you can see, it definitely dwarfs the Para 3. And then up against the Spyderco PM2, it is actually going to be more of the size of the Spyderco PM2. So as far as the size comparison is concerned, uh, think more Spyderco Paramilitary 2 and less Para 3, and you'll be in the right ballpark. Now, I was slightly disappointed in my cut test with the Kubi Interflow because it felt like it was getting hung up, and at first I thought it might have been the thickness of the blade spine, but what it turned out to be was actually the fact that there was tape layered over the cardboard, which is fine because that is an everyday use case scenario. Sometimes the cardboard that you end up cutting up is going to have tape on it, so it is what it is. It did get a little hung up. However, after the fact, I did go back, strop the edge to clear it of any tape, and I went through some paper, no muss, no fuss, it slices just fine. This is actually a pretty deep hollow grind here on the main section of this blade, so it's a non-issue. But before I get too deep into things, I did want to talk about the price. On Kubi's website, these come in at 220 bucks, but the good news is, is that frequently you can find these under the $200 mark, and if that's not good enough for you, I do in fact have a discount code for Kubi. It is RS20LT, and that will get you 20% off anything on the Kubi website. I'll make sure to list that down in the description below, but whether or not you decide to use it or to buy anything from them is entirely up to you. I know that there are other retailers that frequently have Kubi products on really big sales, so if you can get it for more than the 20% off that I currently have, definitely go that route. But I find myself being highly impressed with the inner flow. I'm someone that likes to index their knives to get a feel for the balance, and the balance on this knife is excellent. It's it's definitely a full-size knife, but it doesn't necessarily feel too heavy in the hands. It's, even though it has a weight of 4.7 ounces, which is getting on the heavier side for an EDC knife, even a full-size EDC knife, 4.7 might be a little bit too much for most people. But the weird thing is, is that when I handled this, my immediate thought was that it would come in more around 4.2 or even 3.9 ounces. And that estimation has a lot to do with the balance because the better balanced a knife is, especially a full size knife, the less weighty it feels in the hand. And I have absolutely no issue indexing this and it's very fidgety as well. The action running on ceramic bearings is smooth. There's absolutely nothing wrong with the action. It's very pleasing, very pleasant. And then of course, the blade centering is dead center and the lockup and lockout is as solid as a bank vault. So there's no complaints on the QC end either. With that being said, I do have one thing and I do wish that they had followed the cryo treat process that they did on the brand new Kubi blackout on the inner flow. And I'm not sure if they did or if they didn't. I just find it odd that the blackout came in at 60 to 62 for the Rockwell range and that they specifically listed the blackout having that cryo treat versus the 60 to 61 on the inner flow and no mention of the cryo treat at all. So I'm not sure if that's just the matter of a new process being followed at Kubi when they do their heat treats. Maybe from here on out, we're going to see that cryo treat. Maybe it's something that they have to go out of house to get done for batches of knives and they decided that that's what they were going to do specifically for this one. But it is something that I would like to see across the board for all Kubi M390. And I think that being faithful to that process Process and really shooting for the higher Rockwell target ranges is something that would endear many people in the EDC community to Kubi. Personally, I love the fact that they have switched to only cryo treated 14C, and it's something that I would like to see on the inner flow as well. Is that something that would keep me from buying this knife, from carrying this knife, from enjoying this knife? Absolutely not. 
truth be told, I've had this in my possession now for the last four or five days. And I can tell you that it's been in my pocket. I've really been enjoying carrying it. It hasn't let me down. And for the regular everyday cutting tasks, the factory edge does just fine. Now that's not going to stop me from eventually putting my own edge bevel on here, because I believe that if I laid it back to just a little bit more of an acute angle, it could have some extremely good cutting performance. But for those of you who are not so inclined or just don't feel like it, the regular factory edge isn't going to be a problem either. But at the end of the day, it's up to you to decide if this is worth the bones because with my discount code, it comes in at 176 bucks. It's competing with a lot of other mid-range premium knives, uh, such as knives from Kaiser and other companies in that market as well. But I think that with their commitment to making quality knives, with their collaboration with designers like James Lowe, that they are doing some really great things over at Kubi. This is a company that's come an extremely long ways, and they're coming out with some bangers this year. When I looked at both this knife and the Blackout, I found it exceedingly difficult to decide which one I liked better. And that is a testament to not only the design language from each knife designer, but also the level of quality that Kubi is putting out. Both of these knives are pieces that I absolutely love. And by the way, if you actually haven't had the chance to watch my video on this knife right here, the Kubi Blackout, make sure to click on the video that pops up next.